In section 8.5, we'll be learning three theorems involving proportions. Please note that the diagrams that I give you today are the most basic form of these proportions, and you should be able to recognize when to use these various proportions in more complex and complicated diagrams. Let's first start off with the side splitter theorem. The side splitter theorem states that if a line is parallel to one side of a triangle and intersects the other two sides, it divides those two sides proportionally. Let's take a look at our diagram here. We're given that line segment BD is parallel to line segment AE, and we want to determine what our conclusion is. Well, we have our line segment BD that's parallel to one side of the triangle, and it intersects the other two sides, which means that it divides the sides of the triangle proportionally. So we can say that the ratio of CB to AB is equal to the ratio of CD to DE. So you could think yellow to purple is equal to yellow to purple. It divides those sides proportionally. As we'll see in an example a little bit later, you cannot use the side splitter to find those parallel sides BD or AE. I'm just going to call those sides the bases here. Okay, so if we think about the sides of the triangle are the ones that are highlighted, you cannot use side splitter for those other two parallel sides, or I'll call them the bases for now. So you can't use it to find those two segments. And I know this may look a little like a midline theorem to you, but you can't use that unless the sides are in a one-to-one -one split, or if B and D were midpoints. Okay, so if B and D were midpoints, you could use side splitter, but we don't know that. Instead, we eventually will use similar triangles to find those sides, B, D, and A, E, as you'll see in a future example. But let's talk about why side splitter works. We're given those two parallel lines, which then means the corresponding angles are congruent. As a result, we have two similar triangles. We could say that triangle ABE is similar to triangle ACD. Then we can set up a proportion to say that the length of side AB to the length of side AC is equivalent to the length of side AE to the length of side AD. But what is AC and what is AD? AC is a combination of segments AB and BC. So I'm going to write AB plus BC. And then AD combines segments AE and ED. So I'm writing AE plus ED. Now let's go ahead and cross multiply. Don't forget to distribute following this. So now we're going to distribute the AB and AE which leaves us with AB times AE plus AB times ED is equal to AE times AB plus AE times BC. If we try to combine like terms, we end up canceling out the AB times AE, which leaves us with this. So we're left with AB times ED is equal to AC, or AE rather, sorry, times BC. Now let's work backwards to set up a proportion. And in order to cross multiply and get that equation, we need the AB and ED to be there across from each other. And we need the BC and AE to be there across from each other. And we've proved it. The second theorem is the three or more parallel lines theorem, which states that if three or more parallel lines are intersected by two transversals, the parallel lines divide the transversals proportionally. So I marked my three parallel lines based off of the given information, which means that those transversals are then divided proportionally. So we can say that the ratio of LM to MN is equal to the ratio of OP to PQ. So once again, if you want to think yellow to purple is equal to yellow to purple. We know that that must be true. Let's take a look at why this three or more parallel lines theorem works. I'm going to mark the three parallel lines here. Next, I'm going to draw in the auxiliary segment AF. And I'm going to mark that intersection point G. We have two triangles in the diagram. Let's take a look at one of the triangles. 
In this one triangle, we have a line that's parallel to one side of the triangle that intersects the other two sides. So we can use the side splitter theorem that we just talked about to say that the ratio of segment AC to CE is equal to the ratio of segment AG to GF. Taking a look at the second triangle, the same thing is happening there. So we can use the side splitter theorem to set up the following proportion. We could say that the ratio of segment BD to DF is equal to the ratio of segment AG to GF. Notice both of those ratios are equal to this exact same ratio of AG to GF, which means that these two ratios must be equal to each other. So we can say that the ratio of AC to CE is equal to the ratio of BD to DF. Last but not least, we have the angle bisector theorem, which states that if a ray bisects an angle of a triangle, it divides the opposite side into segments that are proportional to the adjacent sides. If we see this happening in a diagram, we can assume that the following conclusion would be true. We can say in this case that the ratio of segment EH to HG is equal to the ratio of the sides EF to FG. So that ray that is bisecting the angle of the triangle is dividing that opposite side, which is the side along the bottom in this case, into segments that are proportional to the adjacent sides. So once again, we can say that EH to HG must equal EF to FG. Let's talk about why this angle bisector theorem works. We're given the angle that's being bisected, and we want to prove this proportion true. Right away, we can say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, because if a ray bisects an angle, it divides it into two congruent angles. Next, I'm going to draw a line through point B that is parallel to AC. Next, I'm going to extend line DA to intersect the parallel line at some point that I'm going to call E. We can do this because a line can be extended as far as we desire. Now, if you tilt your head to the right, you should be able to see this triangle from a good perspective to use our next theorem. If you notice, we have one line that's parallel to one side of the triangle that's intersecting the other two sides. So we can use the side splitter theorem to say that the ratio of BC to CD is equal to the ratio of AE to AD. Next, using those parallel lines, we can get alternate interior angles congruent, specifically angles 1 and 3. Following that, we can get a pair of corresponding angles congruent, angles 2 and 4. Using the transitive property, we can then say that angle 3 is congruent to angle 4, since, let me write this down, I didn't write it from the beginning, since we know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 from the bisected angle. So since angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, we can say that angle 3 is congruent to angle 4 by the transitive property. Then we can say that sides AE and AB are congruent in that triangle because if two angles of a triangle are congruent, the sides opposite those angles are also congruent. Notice we have segment AE congruent to segment AB. If we look back at the first proportion that we wrote from the side splitter theorem, we can replace AE in that proportion with AB using the substitution property. So we can say that the ratio of BC to CD is equal to the ratio of AB to AD. We'll look at some example problems together in just a moment during the second video.